What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Nikki, coming to you from urbangirlfabulous.blogspot.com. You already know what it is. Today is Talk Tuesday, and I'm actually going to be coming to you today with a two-part series because I really think this is important to talk about, especially in the black community, especially in the Hispanic community. And it's really good information for anyone, but this is really dear and uh, near to my heart. So what we're going to talk about today is keeping up with the Joneses. You know, we see someone else and they have the nice cars, the big house, and we think that they have it going on. And we want to emulate that and we want to have that for ourselves as well. As well. But most of us will go out here, get in debt to try to keep up with the Joneses. For what? That's not what you should be doing. You need to invest in yourself. And when I say invest in yourself, I'm talking about financially investing in yourself and doing things that maybe you weren't taught as a young person about the importance of saving money, the importance of knowing your credit score, uh, the importance of putting money in a retirement account. You know, those things are very important. I wasn't taught that. I had to learn by trial and error uh, like a lot of us did. So I just want to come through and share some tips with you guys that I've learned along the way and that have actually helped me to be on a better path uh, of saving and investing in myself. It is a work in progress. It's not easy by any means because I love to shop. I do shop for deals, but that's still shopping nonetheless. I would tear up some outlet malls, Target. I love those places, but you also need to save for your future. All right, so the first thing that I want to talk about is living below your means. When I say live below your means, if you're working at McDonald's, and there's nothing wrong with that because a job is a job in this day and age. But if you're working at McDonald's and you're hitting the club every weekend, you buying a new outfit every weekend, you going out to eat every day, but you really don't make that much money, why are you doing that? You can't go out that often or you shouldn't go out that often and you shouldn't be eating out all the time. You need to learn how to live below your means. If your friends are always traveling and you're able to go sometimes, that's fine. But don't try to go every time they go. Don't go out and try to buy the newest and the latest of everything. And I know we all have a habit of doing that because it is the newest, it is the latest, and we think that we should all have it at the same time. But that's not realistic, especially if you don't make a lot of money. So living below your means means maybe cutting back on your shopping habits and your spending, um, not eating out as much. I'm not saying don't eat out because if you work hard, you should reward yourself. I do believe in that. But I'm saying don't do it to a point where you're just trying to keep up with everyone else. You know, brown bag your lunch. Start taking your lunch to work. In a week, just for eating out for breakfast, you can spend anywhere from 4 to $6.00. We'll say leave it at five. If you work Monday through Friday, that's $25 a day just for breakfast. That's $100 a month that you are spending on breakfast that could go somewhere else. So live below your means. Um, not saying that you can't live nicely, but live in places that you can afford. Do things that you can afford. Find deals on things that you like to do. All right, the second thing that I want to talk about is having a checking and savings account. I received, or I got my first checking account when I was um, 15, 16 years old because I got my first job when I was 15. You know, that was great. I had a checking account, I had a savings account, but no one told me what to do with it. You know, I'm going out there blind, not knowing the hell I'm doing, so I'm out here writing checks. And then I had to step back and tell myself, oh, wait a minute. This is not free money <laughs> that I'm out here spending. This is money coming from my account that I put my paycheck into every week. So for those um, who are afraid of the banks, there are a lot of banks and credit unions out there that will work with you. They will sit down and they will talk to you and tell you what is the best account for you to have. I believe everyone in this day and age should have a checking account and you should have a savings account. Depending on how much money you make is going to determine how much you put into that savings account. But start with something small. You know, you can start with at least 5% 
of your paycheck and if you don't want to do a percentage you can do a dollar amount maybe start saving twenty five dollars every pay period that's fifty dollars a month okay that's going to turn into what six hundred dollars a year so that's really good if you've never saved a dime in your life but you have to be disciplined enough not to go in there and touch it but I, I do believe everyone should have a savings account and a checking account because you should be able to walk into a bank and be able to withdraw your money when you need it. I am against check cashing places because they charge you a crazy fee. And I also um, don't like the reloading of the cards. I just, I'm just against that because they do charge people fees and you may not have access to your money right away. At least with a checking account, you're able to go into a bank and you're able to deposit your money. Um, a lot of jobs prefer that you have a checking account for direct deposit. And you can also have allotments. And an allotment is um, you can set up to come have the money taken from your checking account and it can go directly into your savings account. So I also advise parents to talk to their kids about money. Um, a lot of kids nowadays don't know about money. I made sure that's something that I did with my oldest son because when he became of age and was able to work, the first thing we did was went out and got him a checking account. He already had a savings account set up by me, but I told him, okay, well, you have a checking account now, so you should put this certain amount of money in your checking account and then put at least 20% into your savings because you're young you're 16 years old 17 years old you're living at home it's not like you have any bills to pay so most of your money should go into savings and that's some good advice for adults as well and like I said if you can't do a percentage right now at least do a dollar amount that way you get into the habit of saving and don't touch it all right so the next thing that um, people should know when it comes to their finances is your credit score I can't stress enough how important it is to know your credit score, not only your credit score, but your credit history. There are a lot of commercials out there for to get your free credit report. Don't listen to those. Those are a lot of companies who want to set you up on a credit monitoring service. The only free service out there to receive your credit report is www annualcreditreport.com that is a legitimate free service it will give you all three of your credit reports from all three of the uh, credit bureaus which is Experian um, TransUnion oh my god and I, I can't think of the other right now but if you go to www.annualcreditreport.com once a year you can receive your free credit report from all three agencies and I say that it's important to look at that because you could have something on your um, your credit report that you don't even know about there could be someone who opened an account in your name with your information and never paid the bill because they were using your stolen ID so that's why it's important to review your credit report every year um, the credit score however you will have to pay to receive that um, the ch um, I just had a brain freeze <laughs> okay I, oh, okay I go to uh, my FICO dot com and that is a um, a website that is funded I don't know if it's funded by but it's used by all three credit um, reporting agencies and what that does my com is legitimate you go in there you pay a one-time fee to see what your credit score is and that's also important to know because your credit score determines what interest rates you will be charged when you're opening credit cards, when you're trying to buy a house, when you're trying to purchase a car, um, student loans, jobs nowadays, they want to see how much debt you have and if you have some serious debt, which is sad, especially if you're trying to get a job and you went into debt. You know, it, all, it happens. It, it happens because a lot of people aren't educated. So make sure you definitely get your credit report and your credit score at least once a year. And if you're trying to purchase, make a big purchase throughout the year, like a house or something, I would say definitely monitor your credit score every three months to see if it's going up, if it's increasing. And just um, do little things like make your payments on time. Don't open any new credit cards or anything like that. <laughs> when you're monitoring your credit score and your credit report. Which brings me into the next subject is credit cards and revolving accounts. It is good to have one or two 
credit cards that you you absolutely should have it for emergencies and just in case scenarios it is not good to have a lot of credit cards and they're all maxed out because what's the point you have 20 credit cards but they're all maxed out so you're really not benefiting yourself because they're all maxed out so all your money is going to pay these credit cards so I would limit um, having credit cards and revolving accounts. And when I say revolving accounts, that's like your Macy's, uh, your Target, your department store cards, um, anything like that that's an open account, a furniture store, things like that. Those are revolving accounts. So they don't have a, a close in on them. You pay them down, you're still able to use them. Same thing with your credit card, except once you max it out, you can't use it until you pay it. Um, Teach your children that. That's very important also. Let your children know that, hey, um, you don't need to have a lot of credit cards. Credit cards are good for this purpose, and that's for emergencies, okay? Limited to two. If it's your first time having a credit card, I would say get a secured credit card, especially if your credit is a little shaky, and then build from that. Um, having one credit card is just as fine. You don't want to have more debt than you have income. Um, some good debt to have would be like your house. Your house note is good debt. Um, maybe one credit card that has a zero balance, that would be good debt because you do need to have something on your credit report and on your credit history to show that you are a credit worthy person. So keep that in mind when you're applying for credit cards. All right, and so the last thing that I want to talk about today is talking to a financial planner. Um, they may seem scary and you may be discouraged from talking to someone who's a financial planner or a financial advisor or a financial specialist at your bank do not be discouraged from talking to them because they are there to help you they're there to uh, guide you in the right direction and what they think would be beneficial for you and whatever it is you're trying to do whether you are trying to purchase your first home whether you're trying to set up a retirement account a savings account a trust fund you know, those people are there to help you. They are educated and they are licensed. That's another thing. Make sure you are talking to someone who is possibly licensed. Some banks have license and some, um, they have both actually. They have license and unlicensed. That doesn't mean that they won't be able to help you um, any differently. However, a licensed person is able to sell you more things um, for um, your financial needs like life insurance um, mutual funds things like that so that's why you want to make sure you are dealing with a licensed professional whether it's a financial advisor or a financial planner or someone in the banking um, in your local bank um, let them know if you've never had a checking account and you need help with it don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed to go in there and tell somebody hey look I've never had a checking account. I don't know how to balance a checkbook because you will be amazed at how many people do not know how to balance a checkbook, do not know how to keep a, a, a ledger or a log of their transactions, have never had a savings account. Do not be embarrassed. Do not be ashamed of not knowing how to do these things. What you should be embarrassed of is if you never learn how to do them. That's what you should be embarrassed of. It doesn't take anything away from you from getting more education about how to invest in yourself and how to put yourself first when it comes to financial freedom so I really recommend going to your bank wherever you bank with and sitting down and talking with a financial advisor or a financial um, planner there that way if you do have questions about maybe trying to purchase a home later in the year or next year they can set you up on a plan to get you started so these are basically the five things that I'm going to talk about today. Um, make sure you live below your means. We all should do that. Have a check-in and a savings account. Limit your credit card and revolving accounts. Know your credit score and your credit report history. And then talk to a financial planner. These are things that can be shared with not only um, younger people, but older people as well. If you know someone who needs some help, help them out, take them to the bank, set them down and talk to them maybe. Uh, whatever it is to do, but we need to stop trying to keep up with the Joneses and we should all try to live within our means. All right, so that's part one. Today, you guys know where to find me. You can find me on Facebook at Urban Girl Fabulous, on Twitter at Urban Girl Fab. 
on Instagram at Urban Girl Fabulous and my blog www.urbangirlfabulous.blogspot.com. All right, loves, until next time, y'all stay fabulous, and I will see you next Tuesday with the conclusion of this talk about living below your means. All right, y'all have a great day. Bye bye. <laughs>